My Sterling Single, Part 35, a video all about the vanishing of the boiler barrel cladding and the smoke box. So this is a painting video. If you don't like painting, I suggest that you turn off now and watch something else. Actually, no, that's not right. This is a vanishing video, which is subtly different from painting. What I'm doing at the moment is definitely not painting. I'm using some 1000 grade wet and dry sandpaper to give the entire boiler barrel a bit of a rub down. I am of course using it wet. I'm using plenty of water too because I do not want the sandpaper to rub on the paint. Sorry, I mean the varnish. If you've been following the series you will realise that the boiler barrel was initially sprayed using Precision Paints Great Northern Railway Green. Once I'd allowed plenty of time for the paint to dry, I steamed the engine to raise the temperature and bake the paint onto the wrapper. And thankfully no bubbles appeared so everything was okay. The cladding underneath the boiler wrapper is quite thick, and I also raised steam very slowly so I didn't cremate the paint, and I didn't, it was quite successful. I left the engine on one of the side workbenches in the workshop, and then I applied some varnish to it, and I applied the varnish using a lint-free cloth. I have a lot of curtain lining, because I used to service a company when I was a computer engineer, and the servicemen of the company used to give me roll ends which make very good cloths for the workshop. There is a definite timeline running as you watch this video. All the water from the sanding process has now dried thoroughly and it's time to use some of this stuff, it's called panel wipe. A warning though, do not use panel wipe on brand new paint if it's the enamel paint variety. I'm using it on this Ron Seal hard glaze varnish which has been on there for about a month. And now, as you can see, it looks pretty dreadful, all scratched and horrible. But I'm really hoping it's going to look better than this once I've re-varnished it. And here we go. This varnish is thinned 50-50 with white spirit. If I apply it too thickly, it's going to run down the sides like a waterfall. In this clip, I'm using a wipe-on, wipe-off method. And I'm doing this because I put too much varnish on with the brush. The question you may be thinking... Why don't you spray the varnish? Yes, a very good idea. But the whole point of brushing this varnish on is I want this engine to look something like the original one, number one, that is in the York Railway Museum. Although this particular engine is not a model of number one, it's a model of a later one. I'm trying to achieve a specific type of paint finish. Full-size steam locomotives are usually painted using coach paint. And this, as far as I'm aware, is oil-based enamel paint. When I look closely at number one in the York Railway Museum, it looks to me like the paintwork's been varnished over the top of the coach paint, and that's why I'm doing it this way. It may not work. I might have to use nitromos and remove it all, but I'll give it a good shot. Because the varnish is thinned using white spirit, it takes a bit longer to dry, which means you can also work it for a longer time. I'm constantly reducing the amount of varnish on the brush by wiping it on the pot and then wiping the brush on the cloth to remove any excess. I'm not a painter, I don't know anything about painting, so any experts watching this will no doubt write in and tell me off. I've seen some diabolical paint jobs on model locomotives. Not just bad, horrendous. One of the big problems with painting models is you need to leave plenty of time between the operations. I tend to rush painting. I don't know why, maybe I get a bit nervous when I'm painting because it's not something that I know much about. As these tutorials are aimed at the beginner, then I think it's probably valid telling you all this sort of stuff. However careful I was when I applied this varnish, I wasn't impressed with the finish until now. So how did I do that? I did it exactly as shown on screen at the moment. I wrapped a piece of curtain lining around the brush. This seems to work quite well. I'm no longer using a paintbrush anymore. It's more like French polishing than painting. Yes, I know that's a bit of a contradiction. The paintbrush is still inside the curtain lining, but now it really won't leave any brush marks or apply too much varnish. I applied the same technique to the smoke box. First of all, I brush on a coat of varnish, and then I wipe it off with a cloth. Obsession mode occurs very quickly with this kind of a job. While I was working on the smoke box, I noticed a bit of a blemish on the paint on the barrel. So I applied a bit more varnish to this area, and then I wrapped the cloth around the brush again. And now this area looks much better. 
Back now to the smoke box. I'm using the same piece of curtain lining as I've used all along with the paintbrush on the barrel. So this cloth is now, I would say, moist with varnish and white spirit mixture. The technique is very much like French polishing. And if you look at a French polishing job done by a professional, often the finish is ridiculously good. I continued wiping varnish into the smoke box paint. I used the brush to get into the corners and make sure that the coating was even. And I repeatedly wiped off the varnish with the same piece of cloth. You can see here that it's starting to go varnish coloured. I would say that this technique could be called the polyurethane varnish version of an oily rag. It's certainly given me the finish that I want. When I made the feature about the sign writing of the traction engine, I showed the sign writer actually painting the letters on the boards and it didn't look too good. You could see every brush mark. But a week later after I made the video and I went back to pick up the boards, he'd varnished them and all the brush marks miraculously disappeared. As I mentioned earlier, because this varnish is thin 50-50 with white spirit, you get quite a good long working time. But when you're doing a boiler barrel, be very careful. While you're working on one side, you could have a run on the other side. So frequently I was monitoring both sides at the same time by looking at the engine from the front and looking down the side at each side. And yes, I did have to correct quite a few runs. During the time spent varnishing the smoke box, I frequently noticed runs appearing down the other side of the boiler barrel. These were corrected and I was just going from side to side until I got it how I wanted it. It is really easy to go into obsess mode with this job, which is not a bad thing really in this case. One more time with the paintbrush inside the cloth with the lightest of touches and I think that will suffice. Provided when I go in the workshop tomorrow it still looks okay I think this finish will be perfectly adequate. The next job on the boiler barrel is going to be the lining. I'm going to do this using paint, but not for a while. I'm going to leave the engine on one of the side benches in the workshop for the varnish to thoroughly harden before I do anything else with it. And that's it for this episode. I'd just like to say, as always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.